last night in the Dome. The Astro bats were on fire. Glenn Davis hit this towering three-run home run in the first inning off red starter Dennis Rasmussen, one of 13 hits on the night. Danny Darwin went eight and a third innings en route to his second victory. Tonight, Ron Robinson tries to cool down the Astro bats in game two of the series. Texas. It's the Cincinnati Reds versus the Houston Astros. Tonight's game is brought to you by Bush Beer. The beer with a taste as smooth as its name. By Toyota and your local Toyota dealer. There's quality, then there's Toyota quality. Who could ask for anything more? And by Long John Silvers, where we want to see you happy. And by Community Mutual Blue Cross and Blue Shield, because just any blue won't do. Pleasant good evening, everybody, from the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. It's the second game of the four-game series. The Astros last night winning here in very fine fashion. G. Randolph along with Johnny Bench, and we got to get at him tonight in a tough assignment. You have to go against Scott. Mike Scott and his scuff ball. Of course, he was accused of it a lot last year. We might be watching it very close tonight. A uh, very poor performance from the Reds last night. Part of that due to Danny Darwin's fine performance. I thought he did an outstanding job. He's pitched well for this ball club since being put in the rotation. A tough assignment to face Darwin, Scott, Nepper, and Ryan, and the Reds are going to have to face that. And when you take a look at the lineups tonight, you're going to see that young Terry McGriff is behind the plate. He'll be handling Ron Robinson this evening. Three youngsters in the lineup with Sable at third, Treadway at second, and it's hard to win sometimes with young people, but Terry McGriff deserves a chance. Well, we look forward to the evening. We'll be back with the starting lineups right after these messages. producer director for Cincinnati Reds baseball is Roy Alfers. The associate producer Jesse Jackson. Network coordinator Dick Mort. Cincinnati Reds baseball is a special presentation of multimedia sports. And a big crowd on hand as we're set to play and it is Mike Scott who's 2 and 0. Oh. The first pitch just outside the line and left is Larkin who went three for four last night, started off by trying to bid for a double down the line in left. Mike Scott, one of the talented hurlers in Major League Baseball, 3.180 RA, Johnny, and uh, he's tough. Well, 17 innings and two, two starts, that kind of speaks for itself, a complete game, and of course, eight innings the next time out. 17 strikeouts, only five base on balls, both good ratios. Anytime you get that strikeout, he was second behind Ryan last year in strikeouts. The next offering is low. One ball and one strike. Larkin is hit in seven of nine games. He leads the National League. Eight stolen bases. Got his average up to 317 with that three for four night last evening here. And another one. This time it's fair. And it'll go down into the corner. And Larkin is on his way to second. And that's the way to get it going. Very aggressive with the bat tonight. Of course, Barry's on a roll. As you said, three for four last night, raising that average up. Was very aggressive with that first pitch, and this time he tried to go down and in again after he missed with the split-fingered fastball. See Jim Quick, the umpire, signaling. Watch. Well, we won't get to see that as it hits the corner. There it is. Bounces off that corner, and Billy Hatcher played it exceptionally well. What you have to do is be careful down there. If it goes on down the and misses that corner by some chance, then you really got some excitement. Here's Treadway, 0 for 4 last night, batting 188. And he's bunning and a deadened it right out in front. And the play to first as Larkin moves along to third. Treadway really deadened that ball in the dirt out there. Now we got a chance to bring you the lineups as Johnny will run them down for you. Leading off for the Cincinnati Reds tonight will be Barry Larkin at shortstop. Batting second, Jeff Treadway playing second base. Cal Daniels bats third and plays left field. Eric Davis is in center field batting fourth. 
Paul O'Neill bats fifth and plays right field. Nick Osaski is the first baseman batting sixth. Terry McGriff gets the start behind the plate tonight batting seventh. Chris Sabo is the third baseman batting eighth. And Ron Robinson does the pitching. Here's Cal Daniels with an opportunity to get the Reds on top early. And a slasher lined right to Doran. Doran took that ball right off his shoe tops. Well, Daniels hit it hard, but right at the second baseman. Billy Doran with a big smile on his face. That ball was hit hard right at his feet. And he didn't know if it was going to be a short hop. And it's, you know, sometimes tough to get that glove all the way down. It was kind of a surprise in some ways to see Treadway bunt. It's good to get a man in scoring position. The one thing you have to do and Pete wants to do is get to Scott early if he possibly can put some runs on the board for Ron Robinson. But with the, his ability to pull the ball and he may not have had much success in Cincinnati. So they used the sacrifice and had he got it out down the third base line he may have been very effective. Eric Davis batting 182. He struck out three times last night and one for four leads the National League in walks with nine. Mike Scott gave up 19 first inning runs in 36 starts last year. At one point he faced 122 batters without a walk in August and September. That was the longest streak of a pitcher in either league. April 24th last year in the Dome here, Jay. <laughs> a very bad distinction for our Eric Davis when he struck out was struck out four times by Mike Scott and then five times by Nolan Ryan in a back to back game. This crowd you can hear they're anticipating a strikeout here. Let's hope that Davis can do something about it. Inside moved him back one ball and two strikes. Chicago beat Pittsburgh this afternoon six to nothing. Montreal leading Philadelphia four nothing third inning. New York leading St. or yes, New York leading St. Louis now two to nothing. They're in the third. That game at Shea Stadium. The one-two pitch. Outside, two and two. Yankees won again today, seven to one over Milwaukee. On fire. Mm, they are really rolling. Billy Martin. <laughs> He's magic, I guess. Keep of trying. He's got a good ball yeah, club. He got a real Tommy good ball John, club. he just keeps going, doesn't he? He's the winning pitcher. My goodness. And on the ground to Doran, he'll make the play in time. And the Reds strand the man after a half inning of play here in the Dome. No score. For the Houston Astros, leading off will be Gerald Young in center field. Batting second, Billy Hatcher in left field. Billy Doran plays second base and bats third. Glenn Davis is the first baseman batting fourth. Kevin Bass is in right field batting fifth. Alan Ashby works behind the plate, batting sixth. Dennis Walling gets the start tonight at third base, batting seventh. Rafael Ramirez is the shortstop, batting eighth. And Mike Scott is the pitcher. Ron Robinson on the hill, 0-1 this year. Just two first inning runs in 19 starts last season. Came out of the pen in mid-June to become a regular in the rotation. First pitch is outside as Gerald Young leads it off, batting 243. He was two for five last evening. One ball and one strike. This the second game of a four-game series. Strike two. The Astros and the Reds go at it tomorrow afternoon here. That game to be televised by NBC. And then Sunday afternoon, we'll be back on the air for you along the Cincinnati Reds television network. The Redhead fires just missed inside, two and two. Robinson pitched well against the Astros in Cincinnati. It was a drop fly ball by Paul O'Neill, and then the three run homer given up by. Frank Williams that really added to that ERA. And that's high and it's a full count. Robinson, 26 years old now out of Woodlake, California, number one draft choice in June of 80. And it's up the middle. 
Young, who started last night with an infield single, has one through the middle to start it off for Houston. This copyrighted telecast comes to you through the courtesy of Multimedia Broadcasting, authorized under TV rights granted to the Reds solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Reds is prohibited. A little toss over to first. The announcers for this telecast are employed by Multimedia Broadcasting with the approval of the Cincinnati Reds. Pitch out. Nothing doing for Young. Hatcher looking down at Dennis Minky. Hatcher with that 353 average. Has hit in every game for the Astros. He was one for four last night. And again, a toss over. Young three for five so far in the stolen base department. He's caught stealing twice. He'll challenge the young man behind the plate, McGriff, but he's got a good quick release and got a strong enough arm to really kind of offset their running ability. Young stole a base last night, Johnny, you remember, in the second inning, but Sabo stayed with him on the play and was able to make the tag. Overslid the bag. Too much speed. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I don't know that you can ever have too much, old friend. <laughs> Fouled out of play, off to the right side. You know, it's interesting, every time now that he's thrown over to first base, the crowd yelling ball. And of course, it seems to be the rule. We had two last night. And there is one crew, Bob Engel's crew, has not called a balk this year. They said, we haven't seen one. Interpretations? Very interesting. <laughs> Bob Nepper and Mario Soto will hook up here tomorrow afternoon. Sunday, it's Nolan Ryan and Danny Jackson. Oh, that's a great pitching pairing there. Runner goes, but his fake throw is low, and it hit the runner, Gerald Young, stolen base. McGriff, pretty good job here, Johnny, but got a good jump. One foot on the carpet, he kind of switched feet, an off-speed breaking ball was the reason that he had such a good jump, and Fredway just fortunate, I guess the Reds were fortunate that ball did hit. Gerald Young. Otherwise, it would have gone into center field. There's that tail that comes yeah. off, and it would be interesting if we could run that again in a second to see the alignment of what McGriff had. It was an off-speed breaking ball. He had to rush it, but whether he had alignment as far as stepping straight at the bag and getting on top so he avoids that tail at the end. One ball and two strikes to Hatcher. I thought McGriff came up well on the play, but after looking at it, the throw was too far to his right of second. Boy, a catcher knows when he's being beaten. He tries to rush things. That's right. Treadway in behind, not in time, as the throw came over from Robinson. Here's that play again, Johnny. Look at a chance here to look from this angle. See, he kind of stumbled. He got his foot caught on the back of the plate, and that's why he didn't have anything on it. No follow-through, all arm speed, and that's a 127 feet to throw with just, just an arm off balance. That's why it tails. Robinson's curve is inside and it's two and two. Texas beat Boston three to two this afternoon. A lot of action in the American League postponed because of rain and cold weather. And three and two. Bill Doran, he's going very hot these days. He's on deck. You look at the starting lineup and through the middle of that lineup, everybody right. We started out with the Astros on fire. They are, especially in the middle of the lineup. Into the hole in right. Young is being waved home. The play at the plate, not in time. One nothing, Houston. It's RBI number seven on the year for Hatcher. So the stolen base works out nicely for Houston. Ball was hit sharply enough with the arm of Paul O'Neill. He had an outside chance. He knew he had to rush it because of Young's speed. And he just gets on top of it because it took such a long hop. It hit, see where it hit? It hit bounced twice. Maybe if he gets it there in the middle of the infield, gets the one hop, then McGriff has a chance to block some home plate and make a tag. 
Doran last night was two for five. Had a couple of RBIs. He's batting three, 53, and a throw over and back in time is Hatcher. Hatcher last night stole a base in the first and later scored on that three-run homer by Davis. and strikes behind the plate. Dave Pallone at first, John Kibler at second, and Jim Quick is at third. That's high. We surmise that Dave Concepcion was thrown out of the game by Quick last night <laughs> because he had complained about the balk call from Pallone, and uh, there's the captain. But it seems now this is the story, boys and girls. Okay, watch. Watch this, Jay. Yeah. He's, As he, he's doing it tonight. Yeah. He's eating sunflower seeds. Okay? He's eating sunflower seeds, but Mr. Quick indicated that he was apparently throwing kisses. To That's Dave what Malone. we were told. Throwing Dave kisses. Malone, and he told Pete, tell him to stop throwing kisses. And Pete said, that's what he, that's what he said. You go ask him. He started out there. He said, take one more step, and you're gone. <laughs> he was gone. Wow. No, that's amazing. And Pete went out and said, how are you going to write this up in your report? How are you going to write your report thrown out because he was throwing kisses when he's eating sunflower seeds at the other end? <laughs> Be interesting. This. I'd like to get a copy of that report and then see what Mr. Giamatti has to say about it. <laughs> that's ball two. Ronnie really having trouble finding the edges, and that's exactly what he's doing. Is he having, but he's working the edges. He's really not trying to get down in the strike zone, putting, making them put the ball in play. And of course, he's given up two hits when they have put it in play. Oh, he took something off that one and did a nice job with it. Scotty Breeden, one of the best at teaching the changeup. We saw a little bit of it last night in the improvement of Jose Rio when he was throwing that changeup. There, having the faith to throw that changeup when it's 2-0 and and a confidence of a catcher to call it. Boy, it'll put you way ahead of the game. But he's really still got to work that ball on the plate. for Davis but he's there that's the best place they can put it in play in the air to center field Davis will do the job out there Doran back through the gate and here is a big hand for Glenn Davis Davis three for four last evening five runs batted in that tied his best day ever in the majors he's batting 375 and he's double tough One run is home. Hatcher is at first with one out. On the second consecutive evening, these Astros break on top. That's high for a ball. Minnesota at Toronto, Cleveland at Baltimore, Kansas City at Detroit. All those games wiped out because of rain and cold weather. Fly ball down the right side. O'Neill coming over near the line, and he makes the catch in foul ground. Two gone for Kevin Bass. Robinson now with an opportunity to get out of this inning with... Only a singleton put up on the board against him. Pass, five-game hitting streak, went one for three last night. It was a question mark before the game. He was not in the lineup when he got here. Hal Lanier had a, did not have a lineup posted because he wasn't sure if Bass was going to be able to play. But Kevin got here, said he was ready, and he's in the lineup tonight. It's important, you know, to have people that will come to the ballpark ready to play, even if they're a little bit hurt. You have to do that. We don't see it so much as we used to. The runner goes. They pitch out, and he's still in there. Well, McGriff thought because of the pitch out, Johnny, that he had lots of time, and as it turned out, Hatcher made him pay for being very deliberate. You know, I, I never really liked pitch outs very much. This was 
Let's see if it was a straight steal. It was because Hatcher never looked to see what happened. And when you have to step out to the left side of the plate and re redirect yourself, sometimes you're a little slow in doing it. And you can't afford that with a guy like Hatcher. So the stolen base puts Hatcher in scoring position. It helped to get Gerald Young home earlier. One ball and one strike. Change up hit on the ground. Treadway comes up and throws. They get a run on two hits a couple of stolen bases strand one after one the Astros lead. One nothing Astros as Paul O'Neill will lead it off as we move into the second inning here in the Astrodome with the new carpet. Mike Scott on the hill. Cy Young Award winner. 86. He of the split fingered fastball. And it's a little high ball one. Johnny good news about Buddy Bell. The ligament tear on the outside of his left knee. Uh, not what they would call a complete tear I guess uh, it's not as bad as they felt no cartilage damage he's going to rest over the weekend and then begin his rehabilitation and some activity on Monday so that's good news yes it is no he didn't want to go into that scope again the Reds didn't want him to the one one is high two balls and one strike In the fifth at Shea Stadium, and the Mets lead it two to nothing over the Cardinals. And Matthews and Good. Mm -hmm. San Francisco at San Diego later, and Atlanta at Los Angeles later, and Montreal is leading four nothing over Philadelphia in the fourth. And into the hole it goes down the right side. O'Neill leads it off. Be interesting to watch the Braves as they try to avoid a record. Tell you, they are really having their problems down there. In Atlanta. And one reason Dale Murphy is in 25 at bats has only one extra base hit. That can't last. Sasaki's batting 125. Inside the Nick. We're started by a National League team, 0 and 9. And right now the Braves 0 and 8. Seen a lot of records last year, just as recently as last year when the Milwaukee Brewers opened up, winning their first 13. Baltimore 0 and 9, but the National American League record, Major League record is 13. And Scott took a little off that one and got him to go. It's one and one. Saski was one for four last evening. One ball and two strikes. Bleachers filled up tonight as he fouls that one back. A lot of seats in the upper deck down the right and left field lines, but the bleachers are jammed here this evening. Must have some kind of promotion going on. It's 3.30 down the lines here. 370 to the power alleys, 400 to center field. This field has been reworked. The new AstroTurf is down. They have another AstroTurf field for football. Very interesting how they've spruced up this field. Did you get your calendar yet? No, there's calendar it's night. Calendar tonight. night tonight. I'm sure we'll be taken care of. 1988 Astro Wall calendar. I always want to know what day it is. <laughs> yes. yes With helps. your schedule, I can see why. <laughs> Work tomorrow, and then we're back here Sunday afternoon. Next weekend, of course. I hope that you're keeping count. We are down in Atlanta. I'll be there. For a Friday and Sunday game. Yes, sir. And then on to Montreal. Montreal on a Tuesday and Wednesday we will bring you Reds action. Uh, Sasky strikes out. The first strikeout for Mike Scott. 
split finger down and in. The split finger fastball will, if it whichever side it comes out of the pressure of the finger, whether it will go down and in like that or away. We've seen it work to the outside part of the plate. That's almost like a screwball. And when you go that, with that much arm motion and put it in that kind of position over the plate in the strike zone, it is just almost impossible to hit. Here's Terry McGriff. And he looks at one outside. Tell me about McGriff's talent at the dish. Well, he's a little late. His, his bat is just a little bit late in getting through the strike zone. He's got to be a little bit more aggressive. And Tony Perez is working with him try to get that top hand to get the head of the bat out there just the infrequency of playing will cause the lateness of the swing as it is well, he was trying to put that one over the wall one ball and one strike okay, let's take a look that shoulder see dropping underneath and he's sort of undercutting with that right elbow it'd be great for a golf swing if you tuck that right elbow in but you got to get that baby out front to fire the head of that bat to get it out in front of the plate. No easy task to face Mike Scott, though. Here's a high chop. As it comes down, it's going to be close, but Scott makes the play in time. Oh, McGriff is out. 1-3. O'Neill makes it down to second. It's an eternity sometime when that ball hangs in the air. You can see him getting prepared in a position. Look at that transfer, almost like Boy, a second baseman. He really got rid of that ball, didn't he? Well, it's important for the pitchers to be able to feel their position and not rush and stay under control. And that exchange is not the easiest thing to do. To take it straight down from that glove, just like a catcher, a second baseman, to make that exchange so quick and get it on line. But he had himself lined up correctly and properly to do it. Sabo, one for four last night. Swings and misses. Sabo has hit in all five of the games that he has started batting at 261 taking over a third for Buddy Bell. The hits are even at two apiece the Astros lead one nothing. That's high. Mike Scott Racing Sabo, Scott, who came here in December of 82 from the Mets, the Danny Heap deal. That's low. Let's pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds television network. Channel 5, WLWT, Cincinnati. With Johnny Bench, Jay Randolph, the Astrodome in Houston. Game two of this four game set. And a strike at the knees. Mm, tough pitch. Yes, tough it pitch. was. And the Astros are doing a lot of promotion, Jay, as the calendar night tonight, bicycle cap tomorrow night. And they've really taken the attitude of getting these people to come out to the ballpark with the financial times as bad as it's been here in Houston. It's, it's been slow, but they're having ways to do it. And the strikeout. Well, again, the leadoff man reached, but nothing happens. And we played an inning and a half, and the Astros lead it one to nothing. Bottom of the second inning here in the Astrodome, the Reds trailing one to nothing. And the next Super X Senior Citizen Special is Thursday, April 21st, and the Reds meets the Giants at 12:35. Veteran fans, well, they got to be Reds fans. They can be any kind of fans. 65 and over, they can purchase box or reserve seats in advance of the game now, yet that's for half price so make sure that you get out and get those tickets early and there is no better way to get to the game than the handy metro shuttle park at the town center garage and board the buses at music hall so make plans now for the next senior citizen business day special thursday april 21st thanks to super x and we hope to see you at the ballpark in cincinnati Danny walling leading it off that's inside one ball and no strikes Walling, 34 years old. Or excuse me, this is Ashby and not Walling. Ashby batting 333, and he went one for four last night. He's hit in seven straight. This is the fine catcher. Switch hitter. Last two years, he's been healthy, and that has been a big, big factor for him.
couldn't handle that changeup. Walling is on deck. Ramirez batting in the number eight spot and Scott in the number nine spot. The original lineup I had was Walling batting in the sixth position. They made the change. There's Walling. Astros seven and one a game and a half up on Los Angeles two and a half ahead of the Reds they've won four straight and of course seven of their first eight They're three and oh here at home their only loss this season came up in Cincinnati last weekend Here are the standings as we go into action today Johnny a win tonight would be the best start in Astro history. And all they need is a little incentive. They've, they've been knocked around. They've been picked third by most prognosticators. Oh, that hurt. We'll tag him. Nope. Uh, umpire has hasn't allowed anything. Fair ball, and he's out. And now we're going to get an argument. Lanier saying it's Pallone's call at first base, and what was the call? Well, actually, the, the man who you would think would see it best of all is down at third base, and Jim Quick. See if it actually did, in fact, hit Alan Ashby. Well, it may have been some great acting from that angle. We kind of blo got blocked out a little. I'll be doing the smart thing right there, just making the tag. And Walling batting at 286. Better angle, as we always seem to get great camera work down here. Never touched him, did it? Great I'm acting not so job. Sure. I want to see. I want to see that again. I think it might have hit him on the foot. Because watch, they, take watch, those his take watch his shoestring. Watch his shoestring. Watch his shoestring. Take those just... cheaters off. This is, looks like one of your divots. See? You sure? That's not a shoestring. That dirt it, it, it up. Didn't hit him. Huh? All right. <laughs> There's another guy who got hit on the foot. No, he's out. <laughs> They're two gone. As Ashby and Walling have grounded out. <laughs> okay, one that more instant time. replay. One more time. Come on now. Are you sure? I'm. I'm just gonna say, watch these guys. They, they have such good work in the truck. Uh, when they hit it down, I'm gonna ask the truck to vote on this. Come on. Let's see what happens. His foot is leaning to the right. Oh, believe me, he wouldn't have taken so long to act like it hit. <laughs> Your depth perception is better than mine. <laughs> Rafael Ramirez is batting at 265. No, he... I know what a foul ball feels like on yeah. the foot. <laughs> <laughs> you if you fall flat on your face, that's what it's really. Show it to us again, Roy. Okay, now watch in the bottom of your screen, right? Oh, See? Oh, Johnny, See I think how it hit foot? him. No, I think it hit him. But, you know, we can't agree on everything. That's true. <laughs> no balls in one strike. The shoestring went up a second time. What do you think the shoestring is supposed to do? Well, it's supposed to go up when you get hit in the foot. <laughs> when you run, the, the well, shoestring's yeah, it, it loose? It went up once when he put loafers. his foot down. No, not with my <laughs> loafers, that's right. <laughs> strike on the inside corner. One ball and two strikes. Ramirez with a six game hitting streak going. I'll tell you, this is a formidable lineup these days. That's outside. Two balls and two strikes. Curve ball. And he got him. Strikeout. So nothing shaking for the Astros. We play two and they lead it one to nothing. Astros up one to nothing. Ron Robinson leads it off as we move into the third inning and he fouls it back right above us. won two out of three out in San Francisco lost last night 
here in the Astrodome two and two on the trip. Oh and two a week ago tonight a tough loss for the Reds eight to three in 16 innings at Riverfront. They won the 87 series from the Astros 13 to five. They were seven and two at Riverfront and six and three in the dome. Strikeout number four. Or number three I should say for Mike Scott. He earlier got a Sasky then Sabo and now Robinson to start the third. Well, we're back at the top of the order Larkin. He started things off with a double. Boy his average has boomed up. He's hitting 293 versus the Astros this year and is up to 333 for the season. Three for four last night and started off with the double here tonight. Larkin, the first draft choice of the Reds in June 85, hit 270 after the All Star break last year and had nine game winning runs batted in. Here's the 1 1 delivery from Scott. And ooh, what a fine job he did fielding his position. Mm, a dandy play by Scott. Sometimes self-preservation. Just good quick reaction. We saw how he transferred the ball on the high chopper. Here he fields his position one once again. He when he winds up, he does fall over to the left side, but he stays within balance and squares himself up, which makes it possible for him to turn like that. A lot of pitchers fall off and can't get their balance enough to reach across themselves. Treadway. Bunted Larkin along back in the first. He bats with two gone. A strike at the knees, one and one. In the game at Montreal. Expos leading at four to one. They're batting in the fifth. New York leads St. Louis three to nothing. They're in the sixth inning at Shea Stadium. High towering fly ball, center field. And coming over is Kevin Bass to make the play in front of Young. They're down one, two, three after two and a half. One nothing, Houston. Houston 0 2 and 0 for the Reds. Mike Scott stands in. Foul. Scott Homer. You may remember at Riverfront back in July of 85. That was the last time he hit a home run. It came off Browning. One ball and one strike. Way outside. Stole a base and scored the only run in this game back in the first inning. The Astrodome. It opened back in 1965. It has had a great deal to do with revolutionizing baseball from the standpoint of speed and the surfaces we play on today. Told the story last night, Johnny. Judge Roy Hoffines, they called him the mad genius of Houston when he wanted to build this place, and he did get it built. But the, well, there's part of Judge Hoffines' yeah, work. That yeah. was his suite up there. Yeah, with the gold uh, water faucets and everything. Uh, <laughs> they've torn most of that out. 
Little blooper out on the right side. O'Neill is coming on. He's got it. That's seven in a row retired by Robinson after he let Young and Hatcher bang him around early. But uh, the judge had a dream for this place, and uh, he made it work, except he couldn't grow grass here. Johnny, did you ever play ball in the old stadium here? No, well, 1967 was my first trip, yeah, and they were right. still working on the panels in the yeah. ceiling, and we'll see it Sunday a little bit clearer, the fact that the sun now not nearly as bright. They used to go through those panels, and it was a panic for an outfielder trying to find it. That's and right. it was in 1967 still a problem. Yeah, it was. Uh, they ended up, of course, having to paint the roof. And uh, the panels that you see there, the rectangular features there in the lighter color uh, or the darker color, were very clear, and they let sun in. <laughs> Still couldn't grow grass. No. <laughs> they had a ballpark right next door here, oh. and it was uh, the pits, to say the least. Uh, if the rain didn't get you in the evening there, the mosquitoes would. That's right. The mosquitoes usually brought the relief pitchers in from the bullpen. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. Oh, was it hot. You can imagine. Today's a beautiful day here in Houston, around 80, 85 degrees with humidity, a lot of light winds, so the humidity wasn't so bad, but... Ernie Banks, you know, is always saying, good day to play three. Yeah. Ernie was out playing in the golf tournament today. I saw him out there. And uh, I wanted to remind him, good day to play three inning. He passed out in the third inning. He said, good, good day to play three games. He, he passed out in the third inning. I'll tell you, he can get very tough down here. Did he hold up? They asked for the appeal. Jim Quick says no, he didn't go around. So it's three balls and one strike to Gerald Young. Let's look at it, John. Did he go? Looked like he held up pretty good. Held those wrists up. The bat may have gone by, but it was turned away to the body. On the ground to Treadway. He scoops and throws. They're two gone. Well, it's nice to see the crowds returning to the Astrodome and the folks turned on down here. As you mentioned, this area's been hard hit, certainly because of the oil problems and real estate problems in this part of the world. And they also came out to see the Reds. Let's face You're it. You're not kidding. Al Daniels and Eric Davis. And These, Reds. These Reds are a great draw. Mickey Hatcher, he got the RBI. Single, uh, Billy Hatcher. Wow. Good breaking ball there. And Robbie even asking where it might have been. Hatcher with that RBI now has seven on the year. Way outside. Two balls and no strikes. Let's look from center field and we'll watch McGriff giving signs. Going the curve ball again. Yeah, up inside. Just inside. The one thing we want to watch from center field and, and we watch with the young catchers, a third base or first base coach, or even with the dugouts close enough here is to see if he's going to give location. If he gives location, he should only give it, he should give it on the curve ball as well, just as a decoy so that he doesn't put the finger down and then go to the one side of the leg or the other, the, end, the right side or left side to indicate location. It's very important because, you know, a coach pick, picking that up can immediately flash that to a hitter and say, here comes the fastball. That's right. Well, Robinson had retired eight in a row. The walk to Hatcher. Here's Doran. He flied to center back in the first. Hatcher with a stolen base in the first inning. Some people use dirt. They hold dirt in their hands to keep their fists sort of an idea of just going there and making sure that you've got some intensity. Billy Hatcher holds his gloves. See them in his left hand, both of them. And we most often see a runner, hitter who becomes a runner, hand the gloves to the batting coach. Billy must play with them in the field or uses them just to ask a balancing effect not to hold his balance but something to give him 
direction as to what he wants to do. He may want to lead with that left hand as he makes that turn and gets him going. He's not going, and the pitch was high. Matt Galante coaching down at first base for Al Lanier. You can see Hatcher chatting with him there. There's Galante, and it's Dennis Minky across the diamond at third. One ball and no strikes. One nothing Astros. Robinson steps off. Every time a pitcher makes an, any move out there, the people start yelling ball. Runner goes. And he's there. Another stolen base for Hatcher. Now they've chosen the curve ball twice to run on. Maybe they're watching the fact that he may be going to the one side of the lake or that. And if he just if he doesn't, then maybe they know the fact that it is going to be a curveball. Well, he had one foot way out on the AstroTurf, got a great jump, and there was no throw from McGriff. That's three stolen bases for the Astros. That's four on the year for Hatcher. There's a curve, caught the corner, nice pitch from Ron Robinson. These Astros started the night with a team batting average of 289 with nine home runs. Two balls and one strike. Two and two. The Astros who play very, very well in this building. I mentioned last night that had a horrendous road record last year, 29 and 52. But they did make up a lot of ground right here. That curve is just outside, and it's another full count. Robinson's thrown a lot of pitches in the early going. He's gone full on three or four. Two to nothing, Houston. Thought for a moment, John, that Treadway was going to be able to make the play. It certainly looked like it. He looked like he timed his leap. This new turf, the reaction of the fact the way the ball comes up had a spin and just had a little shooting effect. Got right by him. Looked like he almost was behind him when he got his glove on the ball and it just went right on through the web. Gives the opportunity with Dorn at first for the big man to bat Davis. He fouled out down the right side in the first inning. Dorn stole 31 bases last year. He's, he's stolen two in two attempts, and they're somewhat worried about his knee holding up. Uh, he's got a problem. He's well, actually, the behind the back of the knee is an attachment, the ligament, I guess, back there that has been a problem for him, and they may not run him too much. Here's a long one. Davis is on the run back near the track and he makes the catch. The Astros pick up a run on just one hit. The walk hurt. It's 2 nothing. We move into the fourth inning. 2 nothing as it'll be Cal Daniels to lead it off. He lined out in the first inning. The Astros, Johnny, have made the most of what they've had up to now. They're a team that uh, on many occasions uh, have to scratch for runs. Uh, they didn't last night, but uh, they picked up two runs here tonight on the bare necessities. Walk, stolen bases, timely base hits. One ball and two strikes. play of Mike Scott apparently <laughs> that or calling a foul tip <laughs> popped up and the play made one gone and 
Scott, you give him a couple of runs, Johnny, and so often you see him make it hold up. Well, with 17 innings in two games, you have to get to him early. It's hard to do to begin with, but he gets better as the innings go by. Eric Davis grounded out in the first. Two to Davis. Walling, Ramirez, Doran, and Lynn Davis on the infield for Houston. Hatcher, Young, and Bass in the outfield. Got it. And that's strikeout number four. And Eric Davis speaking with Eric Gregg. And for a pretty good reason. Side to me. Paul O'Neill down to first base. On to Scott. The Reds are down one, two, three. We played three and a half. Astros lead it two to nothing. Today's game is brought to you in part by General Tire and your local General Tire dealer. And by Lens Crafters. Quality eyeglasses in about an hour. You're watching Reds Baseball on the Cincinnati Reds Television Network. El Capitan, Dave Concepcion. Astros leading it two to nothing. Concepcion thrown out of last night's affair for throwing kisses. I can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> It's Kevin Bass to lead it off. Hang around here long enough. You see everything, right? <laughs> First pitch to Bass is a ball. Johnny, you remember April 30th of 1969? At Cincinnati. Of 1969? Yeah, that ring a bell? I would think that would have been maybe the two days, maybe a day prior to that and that day or the next day that back-to-back uh, -back no hitters were thrown by Jim Maloney and Don Wilson. Jim Maloney, yes sir, he no hit the Astros. That was the last time they were no hit as a team. And Don Wilson did it the next day to the Reds. Mm -hmm. I knew I couldn't fool you. Well, that was a no hitter I caught off Maloney. <laughs> I have to remember Jim, what a great pitcher, and, what a, and he was wow. the most challenging of all pitchers in any any right-handed pitcher. You can talk about the Drysdale. A lot of people do not talk about Jim Maloney enough. Maloney and the job that he did. I'm talking about a good curveball and a 95 mile an hour fastball, he had it, and he went out there to the hill. I was talking to Dick Grote the other day on a plane. And I'm telling you, he, we, we were talking about the pitchers around the National League that he had faced and what was going on today. And he said Jim Maloney was as tough as any pitcher he ever faced. Kevin Bass hits it into left. Daniels coming on. Oh, boy, that dropped right. And he got it just off the top of the toes. Well, the there bottom came out of that one. Lights in the eyes, he says. Got an isolated view of this. High enough, and it's coming right down from the lights. And he stays with it. And... Ooh. Ashby grounded out to start the second. He bats here in the fourth with his club leading two to nothing. Good play. Asaski to Robinson. Nice, nice action there. Picture perfect. That's the way it's supposed to be done. A real good dive by Nick. Stays with it, gets up, gets control, and steps towards Robinson. And Robbie over there in plenty of time, just as he is supposed to be, but he stepped towards him so that there wasn't any herky-jerky part of the motion which caused the ball to move. And he saw it all the way, did Robinson, and was easy into the glove. Hope a lot of you folks will be able to make your way to Riverfront next week. That big four-game series with San Francisco, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday afternoon. There should be some rocking and socking as 
the Giants come in. Roger Craig promised the San Francisco Giants fans a world championship. And the ceremonies presenting the <laughs> Western Division champions. Might have been a bit premature. You never know. Yeah, they promised last year that they'd win the division, and they did. And yep. a lot of people felt like they should have won that championship. The Cardinals came away the winner. Denny Walling grounded out in the second inning. Walling in there at third base tonight. Chuck Jackson started last night for the Astros down at the hot corner. Two balls and one strike. Greg. Very durable hitter. Oh, yeah. And player for them, and really especially off of the bench. He is one of those guys that can come up in any situation late in the game and do the job, and he's done a very good job of playing third base. That looked good, and it was two balls and two strikes. Walling with a 287 career average against the Cincinnati Reds. 78 career pinch hits coming into this season, which is the Astros record. Here's the 2 2. Just missed high, 3 and 2. Again, Robinson goes full. New York still leading 3 0 over St. Louis in the sixth inning. Philadelphia down 4 to 3 in the sixth at Montreal. Ooh, we close. Walling gets it and Davis doesn't. Yeah. That is the second walk given up by Ron Robinson. A two out walk to Walling. Want to see that again? Why not? Outside, but similar to the area, a little bit higher than one call on Eric Davis. And Pete will say, just give us the same pitches. I've heard it said from a dugout a thousand times. Ramirez struck out to end the second inning. Strike one to Rafael Ramirez. Ramirez had a good year against the Reds last year when he hit 327. Cross over to first. It's Sabo, Larkin, Treadway, and Asaski on the infield for the Reds. Daniels, Davis, and O'Neill in the outfield and the battery of Robinson and Terry McGriff. Walling has a stolen base this year. He will run. Al Lanier not afraid to run anyone in the lineup except Ashby or Davis possibly. One ball and one strike. Cleveland is underway at Baltimore. No score in the Cleveland half of the first. Remember Minnesota Toronto rained out. Kansas City at Detroit was rained out. Runner goes. Play made by Treadway in time. And they strand the man who walked. And we are through four innings. Two to nothing, Houston. Houston has the two nothing advantage here in the dome. We move to the top of the fifth and remind you that the Reds ticket offices at Riverfront Stadium and the Reds gift shop are open daily. Seats for all the Reds home games including the special dates now on sale. Park free on the stadium plaza while purchasing tickets. You get the Reds computerized ticket system that lets you buy the best seats available at all ticket outlets. Reds tickets also available by phone, mail and at all the Ticketmaster locations. And Hope you've got your tickets for that San Francisco foursome next week. As Saski takes the strike as we move into the fifth. Nick struck out back in the second. Crowd enjoying it here. They're doing a little early celebrating with the wave. One ball and one strike. Astros have scratched out a couple of runs. Saw Mike Scott step off. He might have been bothered by the activity of the fans behind him. Got that one in at the knees. One ball and two strikes. Saski leads it off in the fifth. 
That is the third time that the leadoff man has been on. Larkin doubled in the first and was stranded. O'Neill singled in the second and was stranded. And now Asaski is out there. McGriff grounded out in the second. No uh, physical problems with Bo Diaz tonight uh, as McGriff swings and misses. Pete just giving McGriff the opportunity to play and Diaz an opportunity to take an evening off. There's Bo Diaz. McGriff is from Fort Pierce, Florida. Stopped by Ashby, number eight draft choice in June 81. You know, with two day games coming up on Saturday and Sunday, not a bad time to let Bo have a rest. They'll be out here early tomorrow, really at 12:20 starting time. So Bo will probably see action over the weekend for both games. That was inside, two balls and one strike. Montreal is leading Philadelphia now five to four. Montreal batting in the bottom of the sixth at Olympic Stadium in the Quebec City. Fouled away. Floyd Yeomans and Shane Raleigh in those two ball games. Looks as though Raleigh is out of there. Yeomans in there at the moment. Raleigh gave up four runs very early. And Yeomans with a 10 plus ERA. Both pitchers having a little problem early. Raleigh is continue. He's 0-2 this year, and he really had a problem. Looked like he was going to be the Cy Young Award winner, and only one ball game, middle of August on. Good job that time by McGriff as he held up, and the count is full. Hits are even at three apiece, but the Astros lead it two to nothing. Strikeout pitcher Nick with not the best of speed. Be interesting to see if Pete would try to get him in moving. Does he trust McGriff enough to get the fastball or will it be the split finger. And they can't turn the double play. Now Sasky is erased and McGriff is over there at first. Got out on the end of the bat the high chopper immediately starts to hustle and. The good hustle by Nick Osaski. And the one thing about it, when you have tender knees anyway, it'd be very difficult to try to turn that double play and take the chance. Doran took the sure out, knowing the bottom of the order at the plate for the Reds this inning. He made the sure out and got out of the way. Sabo struck out back in the second. He takes outside. Ball one. A very impressive spring, and now stepping in for Buddy Bell. Fouls it away. Sabo is 26 years of age, out of Detroit, Michigan. Hit 292 down at Nashville. Once wanted to play in the National Hockey League. He was an All American at the University of Michigan. Well, that's a tough game, that hockey. Ooh, ooh. Did he go around? He did. One and two. I cannot believe they can just hold on to each other and just keep hitting. <laughs> and the, the referees stay there until they somebody hits the ice and they both dive in. I, I don't blame them. I would hate to get caught with one of those hooks. and they, they start throwing elbows. They get close enough. One guy's throwing a fist, another guy's throwing an elbow. Imagine Chris has had a few of those. He's a tough guy to say, Bo. Two and two. Goalie. Boy, those goalies, they earn their money, don't they? Well, that's Chris Play, that yeah, carrying, goalie position. That's carrying all that weight around. He strikes out. That's the fifth strikeout for Mike Scott. Look around. Do you see a? Oh, there the strikeouts are. Yes, out in right center field. 
One white, one yellow. There's the white, and over to the right of that is the little bigger move. Those are not. That's quite in case the other one doesn't <laughs> lose his count. Yeah. I guess it. No, there they were all count. They were. Robinson, like he wanted to do a little bunny, he struck out about in the third. It's to me like these people have taken more time and energy to really do a nice job with their cage. It's the only way you can oh, get on camera. These. Oh, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he could have a long name. Might be as almost like Cruz. Many years, the public address announcer, Jose Cruz, a longtime fixture, did not have his contract renewed, signed with the New York Yankees, and has hit well for them, had a good spring. Well, those Yankees are rolling along. And a good play by Ramirez. Oh, boy. Rafael Ramirez. I don't know how he got to it, but he made the play and gunned down. Robinson and the Astros are still on top to nothing. Rafael Ramirez getting a little congratulations, congratulatory comments from Joaquin Andujar. Fans, the Reds gift shop at the High Regency Cincinnati is stocked with great new gift items and souvenirs coming to the new expanded location and you'll be sure to find the right idea for that gift to your favorite Reds fans. You can also buy tickets to all upcoming Reds games while you are shopping. Come see the new Reds gift shop located in the lobby of the Hyatt Regency Hotel at 5th and Elm Streets downtown. Two to nothing ball game here in the bottom of the fifth inning and Rafael Ramirez made that great play that uh, really a lot of people stood up and said yeah hit the dirt popped up. That's what got the ball up in the air and I thought he was going to throw to Doran for a second. But look at this. Robinson's speed just not enough. Rafael Ramirez doing the job over here. Happy to be away from the Atlanta Braves. He makes no bones about that. Scott flied out in the third. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning and the Astros leading it two to nothing. Both sides with three hits. Neither club has committed an error. The Astros got one in the first. Single by Young, stole a base, came home on Billy Hatcher's single. That's fouled away. And in the third, after Young had grounded out and Scott had flied out before him, it was a walk to Hatcher, stolen base, and a single by Doran. That's been the scoring for this Houston club. The 0 2 pitch from Robinson. High. One ball and two strikes. Philadelphia's batting in the seventh now at Olympic Stadium, Montreal, and the Montreal club is up six to four. Outside, two and two. New York continues to lead. St. Louis, three nothing. That's batting in the sixth. Strikeout. That's the second for Robinson. Young has singled, scored, and grounded out, and he'll come to the dish here in the bottom of the fifth with one gone. Andujar, you saw him a moment ago with Ramirez. He, of course, is on the disabled list here. Out in the left, Davis on the run. Coming over from center field to make the catch. There are two gone. Besides Andujar being on the DL, Charlie Kerfeld and Ty Ganey, an outfielder, are on the DL. There's Joaquin Andohar, very talented gentleman. 
He can get hot sometimes when he's out there on the hill. Has been known to. Wow. Inside to Billy Hatcher. One ball and no strikes. Curveball. Apparently it didn't make it. Two balls and no strikes. Another curve, and that one did. Two and one. Fouled off to the right side. Hatcher started very fast in 87, a 16 game hitting streak right out of the bat, remember? Yes, he's up to nine this year. Fastball inside. Foul tip, or was it? I don't know. The way Eric Gregg went down, I thought maybe it hit Gregg, well, but I couldn't the tell. The fact is, now. Terry McGriff is the and one McGriff, that's down. Yeah, let's see who it did hit back there. Ooh, boy. a little of everybody. Yeah, it caught McGriff, looked like on the left shoulder, and also may have gotten Eric Gregg along the knee area there went through everything. Three and two. And he took something off of it. It's fouled out of play. Astros with one in the first and one in the third, leading it two to none. Greg motioning over to the Astro watch, dugout. Watch, watch Terry McGriff's elbow. You did. We we saw a little bit of it. In the left, Daniels has it measured. So oh, they're down one, two, three, and we have played five. Johnny will be along with the play-by-play -play right after these messages. And a pleasant evening to all of you. Johnny Benz along with Jay Randolph as we watch Mike Scott's first pitch down and in for a strike. Barry Larkin leads it off for the Reds here in the sixth inning. They've collected three hits, as have the Astros. Three stolen bases for the Astros. Timely hitting has given them two runs. Here's a line drive in the center field. Gerald Young on his horse. He will not get to this ball. Bounces up against the wall. Here comes Larkin. He'll round second. He'll try for three. The throw over Doran's head to Ramirez and a head first slide and a triple for Barry Larkin. And Larkin three for four last night. Got the double here to start the game in the first. He really rips this one. That's sweet with those pitches right down central. And I want to tell you, Young, who can cover some ground. He had no chance to get to this. This is one of the hardest hit balls that I have seen from Larkin. And it's a triple. And that's much better, Johnny. Well, we got a man in scoring position. We've had the runners on base in three occasions. We have not done much with them. High fastball by Scott upstairs taken by Treadway. Third baseman and first baseman. On the corners have pulled in somewhat. Walling on the line. Here's Davis just back a couple of steps in that line, and that fastball well up and in. And Scott a little mad at himself for throwing that split finger out over the plate. Ashby did a good job of making the catch there. And uh, this is the fourth time in six innings that a leadoff man has been on for the Reds. And nothing to show for it, as the two to nothing score indicates in the Astros' favor. It's a split finger fastball over. Let's pause five seconds for a station to identify themselves on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. Channel 5, WLWT, Cincinnati. Johnny Bench with Jay Randolph. The Astros lead it two to nothing, top of the sixth inning. Nobody out. Barry Larkin at third base, a little fister out towards second base. Lark Bar Billy Doran will back up, make the play, and Larkin has no place to go. Uh, 
got him on the hands with a two and one count. And Cal Daniels, who's been the biggest run producer for the Reds this season with 13 RBIs, will stand in. And Cal, 0 for 2 on the night, lined hard to Doran and then popped to third baseman Dennis Walling. So with one out in the inning, good opportunity for Daniels to put the Reds on the board and close the gap. High fastball. Upstairs, Walling even with the bag at third again. And a hard hit ball to Davis. They force him to try to come home. Fastball in. See if we can get Daniels turning on something with this. He did, popped it in the air. They may just try to challenge Kevin Bass. It's not too deep. Oh, Martin will not go anywhere. Up for the throw. And Bruce Kim wisely told Larkin to stay and let Eric Davis do the job. And Eric has been very quiet. Over. Oh for two tonight was called out on the strikes the last time up. Bruce Kim doing the third base duties. Eric one for four last night. Struck out three times. Good split finger fastball. Swung over the top of that one. That might have been the best one he's thrown all evening. Well, you know, he's the type of pitcher that he gets in these situations, and now he's got the first two, and he's really going to hump back right now. He knows he has the split finger in the back of Eric's mind. Now will the fastball outside, the fastball upstairs, fastball upstairs and away. 171, the average for Eric. The crowd all settled in. A big crowd it is on Calder tonight here in the Astrodome. We're glad you're with us. Eric Davis trying to put the Reds on the board, and Mike's got a little disgusted with himself for letting that ball get away. Two balls and a strike. Paul O'Neill on deck. Larkin with two hits on the evening. O'Neill with one. Asaski with one. <laughs> Eric really didn't like that call either. Davis, not Greg. <laughs> He said, looked you're like, too tough for me. Yeah, it looked like Eric Davis was expecting a little something different than what he got. Well, they're they're trying to enforce the new strike zone, which has been raised, which should have been up near the armpits. Now has been lowered. Probably in 1927, that was a strike, because that's where the armpits are. They lowered it, and matter of fact, Never had an American League umpire describing where the strike zone was, and it would just be just about where the bottom part of that 44 is on Eric's uniform in the front. Split fingered fastball, chopped to Wally on a big hop. The throw in time. Reds race the lead off triple by Larkin. Fans on their feet here in the Astrodome. They hold on to a two to nothing lead. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Bottom of the game series between the Reds and the Astros Astros leading two to nothing Reds did not put any runs on the board until the eighth inning last night by then it was a little too late first pitch to Billy Doran is in there for a strike nine to nothing going into the eighth picked up a couple of the ninth too little too late and the Astros win the first game of the series and lead two to nothing here and, and a big inning for Mike Scott as Larkin let off with the triple and the heart of the lineup unable to get him in. Going one for two, a single and RBI. High fastball. That's the count of one ball, two strikes. Well, there was a story in the newspapers down here, and I guess carried by the wire services, I'm sure not only in Cincinnati, but elsewhere, Jay, about the, the flight taken from San Francisco to Houston by the Reds players and the article I don't know how it read elsewhere is a ball inside but it may, the article here made it made you think that the Reds destroyed an airplane that was lucky to get in here. Yeah it, it really did. It was uh, I think blown a little bit out of the proportion by the uh, gentleman of the fourth estate here in the Houston area. Full count is Robbie didn't get that one. Well. I wasn't on the plane. Said you weren't on the plane, no. so you know, who knows? No, but it, you know, when you hear what the players have to say, 
And Pete didn't know much about what was going on because he didn't hear any ruckus. Hard ground ball right at the Sasky. He'll take it by himself. Said food was thrown and that the pilot supposedly threatened them. Uh, all we hear is that what we're hearing from the uh, the people involved with it. One of the players asked the the stewardess, flight attendant, to take a tray three times, and she didn't do it. And he said, "Well, it's a hell of a way to run an airline." I understand that that uh, stewardess uh, is the wife of the pilot. That's why he was mad too, I guess. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. If, but we will say flight attendants. I didn't say it. I said flight attendant. They 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 dislike that. And since we have a big base in Cincinnati, we should say flight attendant. Just the way it is. Uh, Glenn Davis looks <laughs> at a ball outside. One out here in the sixth. Well, I want to say this, you know, I've been around Major League Baseball a long time, and it's a good bunch of fellows on this ball club, and I really mean that. I got to know them down in spring training, and I'm sure that sometimes things do get blown out of proportion. Right now, well, it's a shame when they start trying to write things that aren't true. And yeah. supposedly they asked John Browdy. This one popped in the center field. Backpedaling Treadway, falling off Eric Davis, makes the play. Two outs. But the man who called John Browdy, who's on this trip, is well. Fergie didn't come on the trip, and, and usually Browdy makes the first trip. And John said the guy called him, and he said, uh, "Is that what you're saying happened?" He said, "No, I'm not. That's not what I'm saying happened." That's what John wrote. was sitting up front and he didn't know anything about it. So the uh, stories get out of proportion and I hate to have this group thought of the Cincinnati Reds thought of as Hoogle hooligans. They're not saints and angels. It's hard to sit on any flight for four hours. I'm sure anybody that's flown knows that. But enough said. John Browdy our director of information and publications for the Reds who is on the road with the club on this first road trip while Mr. Ferguson gets some of his work caught up from being down in Florida all that time. Not a real big, not a real big plate. Kevin Bass is hitting over 300 lifetime against the Reds, 307 to be exact. He's being very careful with Kevin. He's not found the plate. Three attempts. Bass has more RBIs, Johnny, against Cincinnati than any other team in Major League Baseball. As I was saying, that's why he should be very careful with Mr. Bass. <laughs> Off speed pitch over the play three and one. Alan Ashby waits on deck. Kevin, quite the entertainer, does a great Sammy Davis impression. He did it so many times during the playoff between the Mets. Concentrating now on hitting. He hits this one. Two treadways, flip over to Sasuke, one, two, three inning. The Reds go to the plate now, trying to make up a two to nothing deficit in the seventh inning. It's all right if you stand up and stretch. Top of the seventh inning in a two to nothing ball game, the Astros leading on three hits. The Reds with four, and all four men have been stranded. All leadoff variety hits. Mike Scott on the hill in command, but that's split finger fastball, and once again it pays off. Down and away to Paul O'Neill. O'Neill, one for two on the evening, single to right, and stranded. He made it as far as second base when a high chopper off the bat, off the plate by McGriff, got him down there. And quickly, Mike Scott, who has five strikeouts in the game, works ahead 0 and 2. Scott has not walked the batter. Only four men have reached. No batsman, no errors. High fastball chased and foul back. Fellow's very tough in the late innings. Uh, Johnny, I'm reminded back in 86, he became the 11th pitcher in baseball history to strike out 300 or more in a season. And he is a competitor of the first magnitude with a lot of talent. Well, there's been some question as to his legality on the mound in pitching as far as scuffing the ball up. On 18 games in 85, 18 and 86, and 16 last year. This one popped in the air. It'll be in play for Denny Walling, who tries to avoid the bag, now moves back and makes the play. One out. 
Mike Scott struck out 306 and 275 innings. That's a pretty good ratio. You bet it is. Bettered a little bit by Mr. Nolan Ryan last year on a phenomenal record of 11 plus strikeouts per inning last year, a major league record. That's like hitting 65 home runs in a season when you really get down to it. Noli. Well, they got about six pages of him in the record book that they have, the media guide that they put out. Johnny, it's raining at Shea Stadium in New York. They've hauled it play there with New York in the seventh, leading 3 nothing over the Cardinals. We're going to miss by Saskia counts one and one. Baltimore is leading Cleveland 2-1 to one there in the third inning. New York won again today at Milwaukee. They won it 7-1. to one. Another high pop in the infield. Ramirez. And two outs. So he's gone from the split finger to the high fastball, and he's got him popping up. Rain all over the East Coast. Very widespread when you talk about being in Detroit, all across the northern part, Toronto, They had some snow flurries forecast for that part of the world also. It's cold up there. Foul off of the foot of McGriff. And fans remember the fact that Alan Ashby claimed to be hit on the foot. He was. He was. Well, if he was, the ball wouldn't <laughs> have gone to first. It would have gone to third. And that's their own fault. They should be wearing black shoes so they can see this, the, the spot on the ball. Yes, right. that's right. You, you played when they wore black shoes. I remember you better believe it. That cost me a contract. <laughs> Times have changed. Oh, don't they change. Snow flurries, huh? Yeah. I think the highs in the 40s, low 50s in Cincinnati. So it's nice to be here in Houston. Split finger over. No balls, two strikes. Jose Rijo runs up in the bullpen just in case McGriff gets on. I hope the weather man. Sabo gets on. Pen. Oh, see you later. And a split finger, and McGriff is saying, "Why can't we get one of these pitches?" Two to nothing. Astros lead. Bottom of the seventh. Bottom of the seventh inning. Two to nothing. Astros. Johnny Bench along with Jay Randolph. Ron Robinson still on the mound for the Reds. He's given up only three hits. On the but they have been costly. Two hits in the first inning produced a run, a base hit by Young and a stolen base who scored on Billy Hatcher's single. Off speed pitch, change up on the outside corner for a strike. One ball, one strike. How many no hitters you catch? Caught one, Jim Maloney. This fellow's caught three. Yes, he has. The 11th, I think he's the 11th catcher to do that. Curveball down and in. And He's phenomenal at getting catcher's interference. He got two called on him last year and, and had four while at bat. You can see that big swing of his, sometimes a late swing, and then you saw McGriff's head jump back because of the backswing of Ashby. Got him deep on the hands, and a soft liner to Treadway makes it an easy out. And base, base on balls. Heard Robbie in the third. He walked Billy Hatcher. Billy stole second, and Billy Doran's base hit in the center field. Past the diving Treadway. Scored the second run. Nothing but goose eggs scored from that point. Nothing to show for the Reds. Fastball away. You saw him hit the outside leg and a high fastball. Strikes on as well. Two balls, no strikes. Baltimore leading Cleveland two to one. They're trying to get off the O. Ground ball. He'll take it himself. One, two. Three unassisted as Robbie went over there, but unnecessarily. So two quick outs in the inning. 
and L.A. are underway. Dodger Stadium, second inning, no score. San Francisco got two of the first at San Diego. Ramirez gets a nice hand from the play that ended the inning. It looked like the ball that Ron Robinson hit up the middle was going to be there for the base hit in the fifth inning. Ramirez made a wonderful play. And tonight, 0 for 2. Strike out on a ground out. Ball outside. Two balls, no strikes. Mike Scott on deck. This is a club, John, that, uh, you know, plays very good defense. Uh, they've got the good outfield and Doran at second. Uh, some people think that Ramirez is going to be a question mark for them defensively at shortstop. But I don't. You know, he showed us very good play up to now. Sabo over to his left and up and throws it out. One, two, three. Probably the last inning for Robbie. A good effort. We'll have a pinch hitter. Somebody in the bullpen warming up. We need some runs. Reds trail two to nothing. Two to nothing. Astros lead here at top of the eighth. And Mike Scott working very quickly. Already out to the mound. Throws the first pitch outside to Chris Sabo. Fastball hit hard inside the line. That'll be down there for extra bases. It'll go to the corner. Sable rounds first, goes down to second. Hatcher with the ball in front of him, and Sable can see it all the way, holds up at second with a double, and Dave Collins will come up to pinch hit. Another opportunity, the fifth time the Reds have had the leadoff man on. All five hits have come from the leadoff hitter and nothing more. Jose Rio warms up in the bullpen for the Reds. Augusto, and now Dave Smith joins Dave Smith joins Juan Augusto down in the bullpen for the Houston Astros. And Collins, as you mentioned, coming up, he is one for six as a pinch hitter. Batting 167. Did a good job for Pete last year. Lloyd McClendon was added to the roster today after the game last night. Strike over with Scott. He just gets so tough in these situations. Johnny, I remember the night in Clearwater in spring training we saw Collins <laughs> boom one. Huh? Wasn't that fun? A surprise. And another surprise today, Rivera from Montreal got a home run. Their shortstop. Ooh, that is a surprise. That is a really a surprise as Montreal indeed wins the ball game six to four. Rivera with a home run. You wouldn't have expected that. Sutcliffe with a six to nothing shut out of Pittsburgh. Two to nothing the score here. No balls and a strike on Collins. Hit him in the back. First time in the game that the Reds have had two men on base at the same time, and Scott can't believe he let that one get away. Larry Star Lee May checking out in. Check him out. Larry Starr with all the advertisement in the world <laughs> on his chest. <laughs> Collins is obviously hurting. Well, they got him on the right arm. It's like just above the elbow. The pumper nickname because he loved to lift weights over the one off season. He kind of started developing all those muscles right there. And that muscle right there, chloride on there. Trainers love this. They love to squeeze it and say, does it hurt there? Does it hurt there? Actually, he's checking for any kind of breaks, possibly broken bones or anything, and just making sure the blood vessels aren't damaged. Larry Starr doing the job. Boy, is he a good one. Tried to turn away from it, made the 360, and got caught dead on that arm. So runners in first and second. Tying runs on base. Collins. Barry Larkin, hot man at the plate for the Red, three for four last night, a double and triple in the game so far, and hit a hard shot back that Mike Scott snared. Oh, a real good play in infield. It, well, not even double play depth. I wouldn't no, call that drawn double play it, depth. No, they've drawn it in, especially at the corners, well, Johnny. This is, this is a strange-looking mm -hmm. infield. They, they must be expecting, expecting a bunt, a bunt. but they've at the same it. time, it's an opportunity for Larkin maybe Boy. to slap it through. Big hole on the left side. And now good fastball by Scott. One ball, one strike. You love to see the infield in like this. This really makes it awfully quick. You got to hit it right at an infielder. 
to get the fielding play. Interesting strategy for Hallinier here. Jeff Treadway on deck. John Franco goes to the bullpen to warm up. Ball hit into right field. This will be a base hit. Kevin Bass charges hard. Sabo will have to hold. Bases are loaded. Three for four for Barry Larkin. And he was three for four last night. Lee May now making sure that he watches Dave Collins. Doesn't overrun him. Oh, that's a good split finger on the outside edge there. Johnny, he stayed behind that ball so well and went with the pitch. He is just seeing the ball so well right now. He has to be. He's very aggressive. And that's what they want from the leadoff man. They've been getting it from him. Last night, the three for four, but uh, not a lot of runs scored. Barry Lanier. finally got around, got an RBI in the eighth inning, but he did not score. He has not scored a run up to this point with six hits and eight at bats. Sabo at third, Collins in second, Larkin at first, Jeff Treadway at the plate, Astros a double play dip. Opportunity for opportunity for Treadway. Split fingers, swing out of this. Treadway with only one RBI on the year. Had a good spring. Four home runs during the spring. All we'll take is a base hit right now, says Pete Rose. Cal Daniels on deck. 0 for 2 in the game. Here's Treadway, and this time he misses. We've been getting a lot of those pitches, Jay. That one. All right. Ron Robinson out of the game, pitched seven innings, and did a wonderful job. Three hits, two strikeouts, two base on balls, gave up the two runs. One ball, one strike, Jeff Treadway. Got him with a split finger fastball again. One ball, two strikes. Boy, it's very difficult for a young man to come up to the major leagues. He had a little bit of a baptism as he came up the last part of 87. To see the best split finger fastball in baseball. At least one of the top two or three. Will he go back to it? High fastball. Jeff's a very disciplined hitter at the plate. Hit 305 consecutive seasons in the minor leagues. Came up to the Reds last year. Hit 300 here. Average right now 171. Rio Franco. The old boys in the bullpen. Ready and warm. Strike three, got him. Strikeout number seven. Well, he showed him the fastball before, and now he gives him the downer again. Boy, Scott with some super throwing against Treadway with that split fingered fastball and he gets a very big strikeout. Ducks are still on the pond out there but there's one gone. Well, he's got he's going to have to earn his keep now. Cal Daniels 394 average it's been too long since Cal's had a hit. Astros infield still a double play depth. Oh, he's four good ones in a row. And he may want to check the ball. What they're going to do. There's Pete as Daniels is talking things over with Eric Gregg, and he's saying, Are you sure? Well, it's not necessarily has to be scuffed, it can be dirty to look at a ball. And there can be spots on the ball. That's without problem. And I tell you, the way that ball is breaking down right now, it's breaking as good. And of course, he's reaching back and getting a little extra. No balls in a strike. Bases loaded, one out, eighth inning. Now we'll get rid of that ball. He better not throw that one back out there. Oh, now see, that's a little much. I mean, we don't need it. He's showing, emphasizing, yes, now it has a mark on it. We'll throw it out. A little too much. No balls, two strikes.
crowd come to life. This is what they came for. A lot of them standing. Get Sabo in. Watch out! Here comes Collin trying to go to third. Oh, he makes it. Good base running. Wonderful base running by Collins. And of course, Larkin went on down to second. Larkin very smart. Lee May telling him make sure he watches Collins, and Collins takes a chance here. Billy Hatcher. You can see how deep he was here, Jay. Right on the warning track, and that's a pretty good chance to take because look at Sable starting to hold up a little bit. That ball was there in time. If he's tagged out, that run doesn't score. And now a single can get you the lead. We understand that part. <laughs> <laughs> Split finger missed down and in. I understand that, but yes, he's, sir. He better not take any chance of making that third out at third base. And Sabo, no, next that time will be told to run as hard as you possibly can. You don't know what's behind you. Eric 0 for three. Four RBIs on the season. Foul at the plate. the plate. Really dented the plate against Mike Scott. Continue to work from the stretch. A lot of box have been called from the stretch and with men on third base. Good fastball just missed inside and you know, he can be a little bit careful with Eric. Eric has not had a lot of success against Mike Scott and first base is open. All on deal on deck. Ball three. Ball on deal. The base hit and three trips to the plate. Two strikes, two outs. Top of the eighth inning. Runners at second and third. Collins at third. Larkin at second. Larkin, the go ahead run. Scott didn't like that sign. He likes this one. He steps off again. is loaded again with two outs Paul O'Neill Alan Ashby will have a talk with Mike Scott and Alan here will move off one step up another step and he's going out and he's on a run I would think that there's nothing for Mike Scott to worry about about leaving this ball game he may tell Hal he's not ready he's listening and not talking he bros trying to charge up the Reds. Lanier has had his say. Lanier, who was at odds here with Dick Wagner, who resigned after the 87 season. Wagner, of course, had a rather lengthy career in the Reds organization, and before that with the Cardinals. That was the first walk, Johnny, given up in this game by Mike Scott. Six hits, one hits Batman. And the walk. And Paul O'Neill with the bases loaded. He hit him. He hit him, and O'Neill. 
Neal is happy. <laughs> he was thrilled about it, wasn't he? He's, he's, he's he was. celebrating as he goes down there. He loved it. Tied up. Think O'Neal isn't in this yeah. game? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> All right. <laughs> and that's the last pitch that Mike Scott will throw. Alan Ear walking out. He is pointed towards the bullpen. Now he's going to go see Eric David, Eric Gregg, and I'm not so sure that he didn't want to make a double switch, but he pointed to the bullpen. Terry Poole's going into right field. I know, but Eric, he, he pointed to the bullpen first. Now, if he calls him in, I think he has to cross the line. Is that it before he can make that decision to make the double switch? Thought he should have to go to the umpire first. Whatever, it's a tie ball game here in the Astrodome. Mike Scott leaving. And a real good effort, but not good enough. The bases are loaded for Dave Smith with two out. 2-2 two -two ball game. Two runs in here in the top of the eighth inning for the Reds. The bases are loaded, two out. Mike Scott has been taken out of the game for Dave Smith. Allen here has made a double switch. Terry Poole has gone into the ball game in right field. And Dave Smith inherits a bases loaded jam. And Smith, the big Californian, who added 24 saves to his Astro career record of 124 last season, comes on here. Smith right now 0-1 this year in a 5.40 ERA in the early going. He's pitched three and a third, given up four hits and two runs. And for Scott, seven and two thirds, six hits, seven strikeouts in the walk. And of course, the Reds on base belong to him in what is now a 2-2 game. Dave Smith very seldom brought into the ball game in the last couple of years unless it was totally on the line. He was their ace, Charlie Kerfeld. Man of many distinctions on the DL with a arm problem. Terry Poole is now in right field as we mentioned and Poole will bat in the number nine spot. There's Poole. He came into the game late in last night's affair here. Barry Larkin at third base. Eric Davis at second base. Paul O'Neill checking his elbow where he got hit. Two hits batsmen in the, in the eighth inning here. And Nick Osaski at the plate. And Nick struggling, hitting 148. And he's had a base hit tonight. Had a base hit last night. Trying to overcome this virus. Jam shot into right field. Terry Poole. We'll take the first pitch thrown by Dave Smith, and the ball game is tied at two. Bases, three men left on base. And the Reds now go to the bottom of the eighth, trying to preserve it, and it'll be Jose Rio. It's a whole new ball game here in the Astrodome as we move into the bottom of the eighth and remind you that the Reds will return to Riverfront Monday, April 18th, the big four-game series with the Western Division champion Giants. Later in the month, the Mets are in for a weekend series. Games Friday, April 29th, Saturday the 30th, and Sunday the 1st. Tickets for all Reds games, of course, available at the stadium ticket office the reds gift shop at the hyatt all the Ticketmaster locations are by phone at 513-421 reds or 1-800-525-5900 rio is on the hill and collins comes in at first base so we are in a position now john to get things going the reds way collins already been bandaged he got hit pretty hard by mike scott on the just above the elbow on the outside of the arm. He's got it bandaged up. It's a chance to play. Stays in a bat ninth. Rio will bat sixth as the Sasuke leaves. And Terry Poole, who came in the game as a double switch, leads off for the Astros. Poole hitting 200, no home, no home runs, no RBIs. Was in last night's game. The defensive replacement for Bass, who's had some physical problems. Rio's first pitch, a breaking ball down in the dirt. He had one bat last evening and fouled out to the catcher. 
That's early for the Reds. It's McGriff behind the plate. Sabo, Larkin, Treadway, Collins. In the outfield, it's Daniels, Davis, and O'Neill. Real falls behind. Cole is now the senior member of this Astro team now that Jose Cruz is gone. You mentioned his departure earlier, Johnny. He's been around, but he's been very prone to injuries. Rio having problems finding home plate. Three balls in a row, and he walks Terry Poole, and we may see some quick action in the bullpen. Gerald Young. Young. Hatcher and Doran to follow. Just downstairs. Ball four. Walks the first man he faces. Not a good idea in a 2-2 game. Late going. Bottom of the eighth. No. Well, Alanir baseball would almost dictate the fact that try to bunt him over. Make sure you get a good pitch to bunt. Make him throw strikes. Leadoff man on and noise flashes up on the scoreboard, and that's all it takes here in the Astrodome to get these people going. They're very automated, computerized fans. If it says noise, they yell. If they say whistle, they whistle. <laughs> By the numbers, 32,417, the paid attendance here in the dome this evening, watching the Reds and the Astros. Gerald Young, one for three, has scored a run. Watch very closely Mr. Rio's move. And now Pallone's going to give some assistance to Dave Collins. Sabo charging from third, looking for the bunt. Strike. Pitch by Rio down at the knees. Sabo really on top of it. For Chris. Wise move would be to be a little bit less anxious to get in there. You want to stay under control when you charge so that he doesn't bump the ball over your head or in a direction where you have to change directions too quickly. But being a goalie, he's used to changing directions. Throw over to first base, gets Gerald Young back. Only trouble is he doesn't have the pads on out there right now. Cool with good speed, the ability to run. Rio watches him closely and throw over to Collins. Dave will not play first base that much. And I'm sure the throw by Rio, probably around 90 miles an hour coming over there, quite an adjustment for Dave. Trying to bunt it, bunts it in the air, right at Sabo. No play, don't throw it, he did. Fortunately, someone there. Able to do the job was Gerald Young with a good hard fastball. Now Young knew that Sabo was coming. He laid it down but got it airborne and an easy play for Chris and he tried to double the man at first. Although there wasn't any shot at him. Well, only a chance to throw it away when you throw it. No one he's saying throw over there. McGriff gets the signs from the dugout. Someone in the dugout is telling him to throw over to make sure he's close. It'll be interesting to see the lead of Poole as he gets one foot out on the AstroTurf. Here's a ball hit right back to Rio by Hacker. Hatcher, quick throw, double play, got him. And Rio's out of the inning. We go to the top of the ninth inning in a two to two ball game. Good play by Rio. We'll look at it when we come back. Top of the ninth inning in the Astrodome, a two to two ball game. Both starting pitchers are out. On in relief, Dave Smith for the Houston Astros. He threw only one pitch in the eighth inning, and on in relief is Jose Rio. It didn't start off that well in the bottom of the eighth inning, but it turned out well with a good play by Rio. Well, he made the mistake of walking Poole right off the bat, but he did an excellent job of getting this double play as he wheels and fires and Larkin. Returns that ball in time and they turn the 1 6 3 double play. Dave Collins, first base ending that play. On as it made a double switch. Nick Sasky went out and that's when Rio came in. A pinch hitter. Up for Terry McGriff. Leo Garcia batting at 250. 
They are one for four, all in pinch hitting roles. Good defensive outfielder, good speed. Dave Smith starts him off with a split finger away. He's been throwing that split finger, that change up down our way for many years, long before Scott. Fastball away. No. Another split finger. Leo's taking. Now he's really taking. Two balls and no strikes. Montreal beat Philadelphia six to four. They're still delayed by rain at Shea Stadium, where the Mets lead three to nothing over St. Louis. Garcia trying to get aboard. The Reds are able to get the leadoff man on. In five innings, they finally scored in the eighth. And Chris Sabo led off with a double. They had the leadoff man on in the first, second, fifth, sixth. And finally prevailed in the eighth, and they really missed a golden opportunity in the sixth when Barry Larkin let off with a triple and was stranded there. Popped up. Dave Smith's got to make a call. Glenn Davis makes the point. So after falling behind 2 0, oh, he gets. Leo Garcia on a pop in the infield and that will bring up Chris Sabo and Dave Collins waits Collins waits on deck a week ago tonight 16 innings at Riverfront these two teams went at it I only have uh, 12 innings on my I know, score sheet. I, I get another one ready for you <laughs> we're not going anywhere we're going to get a run right here that sounds good to me Fastball line back to the screen. Interesting. Put down three fingers. That's for the fastball. Uses different signs, maybe different accounts. Never know. You don't want anybody stealing those signs. Sabo, one for three. Two strikeouts and a double. Works away again. Curveball. One of the rare. Curveball that Dave Smith will throw. And he bounced it. One ball and two strikes. Maybe he was just trying to do something different on Chris because Chris has not seen Dave Smith that many times. Collins on deck. Lined hard down the left field line, and Denny Walling is standing right on top of that line trying to avoid any extra base hit. It's one of the late inning rules that some follow. A lot of the traditionalists follow it anyway. Well, I think on certain pitchers you should follow it. Sure. Look at where he's standing. So Dave Smith, you guard the line. Dennis Wally gets the line drive and two quick outs. He didn't have to move, did he? Had he been away from the line three or four steps, would have had a tough time catching that one. So two outs for Collins. They've scored after he was hit by that pitch. He looks for the pitch out away from the plate for a ball. They with a good speed on board. Larkin, I see a little running, a little movement on the base pass. Paid off for the Astros. They've stolen three bases tonight. This ball foul back out of play. That's ball's five seconds for stations to identify themselves on the Cincinnati Reds television network. Channel 5, WLWT, Cincinnati. Two to two ball game, top of the ninth in the Astrodome. I'm Johnny Bench along with Jay Randolph bringing you a rather exciting ball game now. Very slow in the middle innings. Up until the eighth inning. One run in the first and third, and a run in the first third by the Astros. The Reds finally broke through as they did last night. But the insurmountable lead of nine runs too much for the Reds last night. Good pitch. Just caught the outside corner. Turned it over with that split finger. And two balls, two strikes, two outs.
action in the Astros bullpen. Kind of blocked by the screen. Struck him out with a fastball upstairs. We're going to the bottom of the ninth. One, two, three inning for Dave Smith. Two, two to two is the score. Guests appearing on the Cincinnati Reds telecast will receive a gift from Lazarus. Or a gift from Hellbros, the tradition in time. See Hellbros Quartz watches at leading stores and catalog showrooms. Two to two, the score here in the Astrodome in the bottom of the ninth inning. Ron Robinson squared off against Mike Scott. And Robbie went seven innings, gave up three hits, two runs, two earns. Mike Scott went seven and two-thirds innings, gave up six hits, two runs, and two earned. And Bo Diaz moves behind the plate for the Reds as Pete Rose pinch hit for Terry McGriff with... Leo Garcia, and now Bo gets the call. And won't be too long until they'll be headed back out here as a game tomorrow at 12:20. For the Houston Astros, Billy Doran leads off, and Billy with a base hit on an RBI in the third inning, 0 for 3. Big job here for Rio as he faces Doran, who came in tonight batting 353. Davis batting 375. Bass batting 429. One ball, one strike as Rio misses with the changeup. Used to seeing the left-handers out there in those situations last year. Rob Murphy, good fastball for a strike. Don Franco. This young man wants the ball. That's good to see. He'd like to be in the starting rotation. No room at the end right now. Two balls, two strikes. He misses. Rio came over in the trade, of course, for Dave Parker along with Tim Burtzis. Got him with a slider. Good pitch. And so Doran goes down. Only the third strikeout of an Astro tonight. The fans come along. been shut down tonight after going three for four and getting five RBIs last evening. Five home runs, 15 RBIs, leads the National League, and Rio starts him off with a hard slider as the shift is on. You see Treadway in your, well, you did see him in your screen. Now they've moved him straight back up second. Now they're moving him back. Now yeah, they're thinking with the fastball and the hard slider, he may be able to hit one the other way or try to go the other way. Last night he hit one between the shift, and how he got it, I do not know. Just about where a regular shortstop would have been playing had it been no shift. Good slider this time, called a strike, two balls and a strike. 32,417 on hand. Somewhat in disagreement, and the traffic will be heavy after this game because nobody's leaving. Got him swinging at that one, trying to win it by himself. Was Davis and Rio evens the count at two balls and two strikes. Craig Reynolds has moved out on deck. Fastball and a good one on the outside corner, foul back out of play. Two more games to follow Saturday and Sunday. Then the Reds and the Giants square off in a big series in Cincinnati. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Thursday, the Senior Citizens Businessman Special. Super X. Make sure you buy those tickets in advance of game day. If you're 65 and over, reached out and got the fastball. O'Neill, no problem. Two out. Johnny, you're talking about that afternoon game. I... I still love to go to the ballpark in the afternoon. It's it's really a nice uh, event for the senior yeah, really citizens is. and everybody. And uh, the businessmen can sneak off for a few hours downtown. And no, I don't think they even should have to sneak off. I think <laughs> should plan it. Should plan. The whole You're staff right. should plan it because it's so close to downtown. The great thing about Riverfront Stadium being downtown is so convenient. It's Alan Ear looking on as he sends Craig Reynolds to the plate. He'll bat for Dave Smith. Reynolds batting at 250. 
Came right out of high school here in Houston, Reagan High. He was the top athlete, high school athlete in this city back in 1971. Came here in the Floyd Bannister deal, December of 78. Check the swing. Yes, says Jim Quick. Greg lives out at Champions. Not a bad Country place Club. to live. A lot of golf courses. And doesn't play golf during the season. <laughs> Slider. Nope. You never know with Eric when he turns the other way. He calls strikes to his left. Punches him out. And so when he turns, I'm not sure if he's going to continue with it because he doesn't call it immediately. Two balls, no strikes. Rio falling behind. Two balls and one strike. You know, Greg and I have a thing going because I, I've, I've always said Greg sort of, and when I first time I met him and said hello, it was like he thought I said Fred. <laughs> so to this day, as I did the day before the game, I said, how you doing, Craig? And he said, he shook his head, and I said, how you doing, Fred? And he said, I'm fine. <laughs> Fastball outside, three balls and a strike. Reynolds trying to get on board for Ashby with two outs here in the bottom of the ninth. San Francisco is leading San Diego 3-0. Third inning. Atlanta's still in the ball game in L.A. Oral Hershiser pitching for the Dodgers and Glavin. Good fastball. Didn't get the call. Bo will ask Mr. Greg. In fact, he's not even throwing it back yet. He's saying things, and he's not turning around. And my goodness, Pete, somewhat interested as well. Oh yeah. Gosh, you know, if you know how how dangerous all this can be in the ninth inning, you want to get up for another time, try to get ahead. You don't want to get. With two outs, but Reynolds, who has good speed, probably will not steal. And Ashby, with good potential power to the walls, is power much better from the left side of the plate. Collins holds Reynolds at first. Rio works in behind. 1 0 ground ball in the hole. Diving. Treadway up from the knees. Got him. Oh, boy. Good play by Treadway. You can put a star on it. The Astros leave one via the walk. We're going to extra innings. Tie ball game 2-2. Two -two. Two to two ball game, top of the tenth inning. We're going to extra innings, and it seems like the Red. It doesn't seem like the Reds do like to play extra inning game. I don't know if they like it, but they are playing them. They played three extra innings games before this one. Jeff Treadway with a diving stop of Alan Ashby's ball into that ninth inning after Greg Reynolds had walked. Good extension at the line. Plenty of time. Ashby not running well, and. That's what got us here, and it'll be Larry Anderson on the mound for the Houston Astros. Nothing but zeros except in that win column. He's got one beside it. Anderson has pitched two games, four and a third innings, four hits. He pitched in the series in Cincinnati. And to bring you all the play-by-play -play in extra innings, and I, I really <laughs> no, kind of hate to give it to you because... <laughs> The Reds need offense, and you have not provided much offense no, in three I, games I, before I you turned it over I to me. Certainly have not done. In fact, did I do no. the did I do the inning in the extra inning ball game? Opening please? game, and you did do the inning that won the game. So get ready yeah. to do the twelfth. Never mind. Uh, I'll take over from here. Here's Jay. <laughs> All right, John. Larry Anderson used to be with the Phillies. Signed by the Astros in May of '86 and put together his finest season in the majors. Had a career high of wins and innings and strikeouts last year. And he's going to face Larkin, who has had himself a three for four tonight, a double, a triple, and a single. He grounded out in the third. Be nice to have him hit for the cycle, Johnny, right now. <laughs> Larkin's average up to 356 as he stands in there. Strike on the outside corner. Scott won seven and two thirds, gave up two runs, six hits, struck out seven, walked one and hit two. Smith went an inning and a third, struck out one, zeros the rest of the way across. 
And now it's Anderson. One ball and one strike to Larkin. That's low. Walling, Ramirez, Doran, and Davis on the infield. Poole coming over and he makes the catch in fair territory. This Larry Anderson has come over to the Astros and you know a lot of pitchers for some reason come over here and we might as well give a one reason Les Moss. Yeah they come over here and they flourish and Anderson was a decent pitcher uh, above average in a lot of categories over in Philadelphia but Les Moss that man right there drinking out of the cup has really made a lot of pitchers into strikeout artists and also control pitchers and that know how to pitch a lot of credit to that man a former catcher and then that will never mind <laughs> here's Treadway right down there one ball and one strike After nine, two six and zero oh for the Reds, and two three and zero oh for the Astros. Two balls and one strike. Jeff O for three, one sixty seven average. Let's let's take a look at his stance. Now he has hit normally like like George Brett, and I can tell you right now his stance is different. What has he done? Well, he's not got all the weight back on that left side. He likes to stay back, and when you stay back, you stay over that, and then you drive forward off of that leg. Oh, good work, guys. See how he's already gone forward here? Now got he's got the, right out over the top of it. Got him so right he's got to right stay leg. back over that back left leg so that when he when he starts to make his move, he's there and he can make all of his move forward at once and not get out in front. Here's the 2-2 pitch from Anderson. Stroke foul off to the left side. Treadway with a sacrifice bunt in the first, followed that by flying out to right. Popping out to second and striking out in the eighth. This big crowd, most of them hanging around. That's foul. Is a good sinker? Became one of the top middle relievers for the Astros. Struck out the side three times in 87. Allowed only eight of 25 runners he inherited to score. That's good success. The Astros only loss so far this year to the Reds in Cincinnati last weekend. They're undefeated here at home. The Reds trying to stop them. And Ramirez comes over. Takes the liner. They're two gone. Now in Philadelphia, Larry Anderson, three and seven. 3-3, 0-0 three and three, oh and oh in 86 before he came over to Houston. And, well, since he's been in Houston, his record, 12-6. and six. Cal Daniels has lined out, popped out, fly to right. His sacrifice fly in the eighth. Got the first Reds hung across the plate. Later a run scored when O'Neill was hit by a pitch. And the first... One is across for a strike from Larry Anderson. We are in extra innings, as Johnny mentioned. The Reds losing an extra inning game to these Astros in Cincinnati last weekend. Won the opener in extra innings. Lost in San Francisco in extra innings before coming in here. This is foul. Houston is 1 and 0 in extra inning games on the young season. Well, they finally called it after 7 innings up in New York. New York posts a 3 nothing victory over St. Louis. That's inside. Montreal beat Philadelphia 64, 6 to 4 and Chicago shutting out Pittsburgh 6 to nothing this afternoon. San Francisco still leading 3 0 over San Diego in the fourth inning. Atlanta leads LA 2 1 there in the fourth, and it's 2 2. Seemed like last year there weren't any rainouts. Already we've 
Seemed like early part of the season there weren't any, and now we've just had rain out after rain out. And into right, hitting in front of Poole. It's a two-out single for Daniels, and that gives Eric Davis another opportunity. Davis 0 for 3 is grounded out, struck out. Then in the sixth, he grounded out again. He walked in the eighth. Reds now with seven hits. Daniels, one stolen base on the year. Of course, he has the good speed. He looked to go and didn't. This big crowd, better than 32,000. They were celebrating a couple of innings ago, but most of them are still around. But it's a little quieter here as the Reds came back to tie this one up. Runner goes, and no throw. Stolen base for Daniels. And the opportunity for the Reds to take the lead if Davis can get the job done. Ashby, 37 years old, because they only... They are looking for catching because he threw out only 29 of 150 base stealers, 19.3% last year. He had some kind of mysterious circulation problem in his left hand. Well, you're doing some heavy homework again. Thank you. <laughs> and it's foul back. Two balls and one strike. Well, it'd be great to see Eric begin to pump it around the way we know he can. Yes, it would have been nice that he was in that group because he would like to have that pitch back right there. Oh, I'm sure. And of course, they're going to pitch him extremely tough this year. Once they've been around the league and they know that he can hit 37 home runs and do what he did with 100 RBIs. Yeah, it uh, changes your perspective, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And you got to have a thumper behind him. At least somebody that's consistently hitting. And tonight, Paul O'Neill may have the opportunity. Columbus native with an excellent stroke. Little chopper, it's going to be a tough play for Walling, and he has no play, and the runners are at the corners. An infield single for Davis at good speed. And Walling, who was laying back near the line at the bag, couldn't make a play. And now Lanier coming out to talk things over with Larry Anderson. Okay, he's going to tell the middle infielders and the catcher what he wants to do as far as Davis going to steal. Uh, he said, fine, let him run. Do not make any kind of throws. We're going to get Paul O'Neill. If he does that, we'll walk him, and then we'll get to Tracy Jones, who has come to the on-deck circle to bat for the pitcher. And Scotty Breeden giving some signs down to Rob Murphy as Don Franco is already out in the bullpen. Murphy will join him very quickly. O'Neill standing in and uh, Anderson whirling and faking a throw to third and then one over to first. Didn't fire either way. Right, so that can be walk time too if you don't do it correctly and step straight to the bag. It's and low. They're playing behind Davis at sure first base. O'Neill singled in the second, grounded out in the fourth, popped out in the seventh, was hit by a pitch. In the eighth, foul straight back. One ball and one strike. We're in the tenth inning in the Astrodome in a 2-2 game. The Reds about hit the Astros 8-3 and a chance to take the lead here in the tenth. Giving him second base. They're playing him back to the line almost. And is Eric going to take it? No. Surprised he doesn't run. But I, I guess they just don't want Tracy up there facing a right-handed pitcher, but... Two balls and one strike. There he goes. And the ball is foul. Davis was going that time, and now it's a count of two and two, with two on and two out here in the tenth. Larry Anderson. Anderson from the great Northwest, born in Portland, Oregon. Lives in the state of Washington. Yogi Berra on the right there. Hal Lanier, the head man of these Astros. Davis goes. Pitch is just outside. Three and two. 
Daniels at third, Davis at second. You'll see a similar type pitch right here. He'll try to hit the bust the out fastball on the outside corner, a diving slider. He's got a chance to hope that Paul O'Neill will chase a bad pitch. And down the line in right. And here come the Reds, Daniels and Davis. And the Reds have the lead four to two. Oh, that's fun. It's been a long drought for me. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> no stolen base. No stolen base. Aaron Davis, because they did not contest it. Right. It was conceded. O'Neill, he didn't get that slider down. So he was trying to get the slider down and in for him to chase, and he got it right down in the zone, and that's why I wanted him to steal second base. You can get two runs. I'd have some, might as well have some extra to play with. This is Tracy Jones. O'Neill picking up his third and fourth RBIs of the season, and they are big, big tallies. Jones batting for Rio. What a nice job Rio did. You're almost glad that it was Paul O'Neill because he took that, that hit. That's right. When he got hit by Mike Scott, and we had him giving that, yeah, that raw, raw attitude. Let's get him. Take one for the team, that's what they mean. Jones batting at 200. Gracie, now 28 years old, a competitive Californian. Slaps it on the ground. Davis will make the play unassisted. But the Reds have the lead. We'll go to the bottom of the 10th. 4-2 Cincinnati. Bottom of the 10th, 4-2 Reds. And it's John Franco to the mound. Johnny's been in four ball games. This is fifth, seven innings, three hits. Has the only save for the Reds bullpen thus far in this young season. It was the closer last year, Deluxe. Rio did a nice job, Johnny, as I mentioned. He went two innings, gave up no runs and no hits. He had a walk and a strikeout. We're going to get a pinch hitter. It's going to be Pankovitz. Pankovitz to bat for Walling. Last year for John Franco, 32 saves, 68 ball games. Really, of course, a lot of ball games. A record by Rob Murphy, Frank Williams in a number of games. Pete had to go to the bullpen an awful lot, but we got seven innings from a starter again tonight. Now Franco trying to close it. Pankovitz hit 230 here last year, and he hits the first pitch on the ground to Treadway. And there's one gone, and the Reds are two outs away from a big, big extra inning victory. Second, grounded out in the fourth and in the seventh. Magavitz swinging at the first pitch. A lot of times we send a pinch hitter up there. We saw when Dave Smith came in throwing the first pitch, as Sasky hit that. Now Ramirez trying to take a couple of pitches. We've got Steve Henderson. Signed as a free agent for the Astros in March of this year, out on deck. Former Cincinnati Red, 